got to speak to the entire planet Earth right now, and I've got things to do, even though they pale in comparison, but... You know, we used to pray before we went into battle. Well, I, I think a prayer would be appropriate, but the Catholic Baptist thing... Perhaps a song. A song? Well, to hear my singing voice, sir, would surely change your opinion of me, but... Um, but I did have one song that I loved as a boy. Amazing Grace, written by an ex-slaver before he found his conscience. I think it would be perfect for this occasion. Do you know the words? I'll follow you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You started a peace corps. 
How about the Cuban Missile Crisis? They don't remember you for that. God, you've got me talking like this. You're barely 40, Jack. Stop all this morbid talk. Do you remember Dad's friend, Uncle Mark? Yes, Dad's drunk friend. Dad's best friend and the reason I joined the Navy. Oh my God, all this folklore. Yes, our Uncle Mark, whose stuff I used to rub. You used to rub. Yes, and I won six dollars doing it. Oh, don't tell me you forgot. You've been telling that story so long you forgot it was me. <laughs> well, don't forget what Dad used to say about the anecdote. Don't let the veracity of a good yarn <laughs> keep you from its timely and effective purpose. <laughs> well, let me tell you about this dream I had about Lamar. Gosh, Jack, enough, enough of dreams. Your dreams, King's dreams. They have guns, Jack. And guns are far more effective way of winning an army. A gun never killed a dream. No, but they're very good at killing dreamers. And they had lots of practice. I'm going to push the Civil Rights Bill, Bobby. I'm going to push it through Congress. Oh, the Klan and Civil Rights. You've already decided why we have this discussion. Yes, and I'm going to expose the Klan and other secret organizations that threaten this country. Not the Klan and Civil Rights, Jack. Please. Please, Jack. And how long are we going to hide, Bobby? I mean, how long? What is that Bible verse? Remember uh, Sunday school? Uh, Everything in the darkness must come into the light. Men live in the light. Jack, every man surrounding you right now that has a gun is part of a secret organization. The CIA, the Secret Service, the Yale Boards. Jack, don't please, please Jack. Bobby, when my PT boat went into the water, I went to save those men. I wasn't thinking about becoming a hero. I was thinking about what kind of a job I was going to have at the end of the war. What Jackie was going to look like when I saw her that weekend in that dress, and how good she would look out of it. And what was for dinner, and I prayed it wasn't chipped beef. I, I wasn't prepared for nearly losing my life, let alone becoming a hero. History chooses you, Bobby. History chooses the moment, and all you can do is what your, what your conscience dictates. No matter what, Bobby. No matter what. To I hope that every American, regardless of where he lives, will stop and examine his conscience about civil rights. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal, and the rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. The Negro baby born in America today, regardless of the state in which he is born, has about one half as much chance of completing a high school as a white baby born in the same place on the same day and has a life expectancy which is seven years shorter. One hundred years of delay have passed since President Lincoln freed the slaves, yet their grandsons are not fully free. They are not yet freed from bonds of injustice. They are not yet freed from social and economic oppression. And this nation, for all its hopes and all its boasts, will not be fully free until all its citizens are free. We face, therefore, a moral crisis as a country and a people. It cannot be met by repressive police action. It cannot be quieted by token moves or talk. It is time to act in the Congress, in our state and local, local legislative body, and above all, in our daily lives. A great change is at hand, and our task, our obligation, is to make that revolution, that change, peaceful and constructive for all. Those who do nothing are inviting shame as well as violence. Those who act boldly are recognizing right as well as reality. Next week, I shall ask the Congress of the United States to act to make a commitment it has not fully made in this century to the proposition that race has no place in American life or law. And I want to say, as Americans, we abhor the idea of secret organizations. <laughs>